start recording again. So, welcome, to, of course, once again to Gathering the Roll. Uh, it's the tabletop news program for December 12th, 2017. Of course, we're diving right back into the news of this week. We do have some exciting and fantastic things that have come out this week we want to talk about. Um, there's plenty of it. Why don't we just dive into it so we can get some things done, uh, since I might want to get one more stream in today. So, let's dive into the CCG binder, of course, with some Magic the Gathering news. Uh, of course, there are two Grand Prix out this week. We have the Grand Prix New Jersey, which is going in Secaucus, New Jersey, right in my back alley kind of thing. Well, driving distance. Uh, so if you want to check it out now, it's uh, $80 for the main event. It is a Ixalan Limited tournament out now. Oh, hi, Damien. Uh, Streamcat is here for everybody. Also out is, of course, the Grand Prix Singapore this weekend in uh, Singapore, China. Uh, that one is a... Um, 120 Singapore dollars or something. I'm not sure. Uh, sorry about the exact money version of it. But if you're in a China and you want to check out that one, that is also an Ixalan limited tournament. Now, also out, of course, though, is Unstable. The Unstable set has been released. So this is a 200 so card set that's been released by Magic. It's one of their more uh, joke related sets that they've had before. They've had some of these in the past. Um, with um, uh, unglued and unhinged but unstable now is bringing in uh, lots of experimental techniques that probably wouldn't be very good for an actual game of Magic the Gathering but for something that's entertaining that's a little bit okay uh, it's something fun for you to check out now you don't need your screen okay okay that's fine uh, so, Unstable is out now. If you want to try out something a little more experimental in Magic or just have a fun time with some drafts, go ahead and check it out. Uh, let's move on, though, because there is some Yu-Gi-Oh! news. Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, the special edition circuit break uh, pack has been released. It's got three boosters of super uh, circuit break. Uh, two to four super rare card, two of four super rare cards being sold for ten dollars now. So if you want a little bit of circuit break, all put together with a couple of super rares. Sorry, I have to be quiet in there, it's okay. And you really have to. Why don't you go play with Mr. Webby on this side? Okay. She's adorable that way. You can check it out now. Um, also out though is the tournament pack six. That was really hard to see. Sorry about that. It's the best image I could find of it. So it's a specialized booster pack product. Um, it's a new prize pack for official tournaments that they're being released right now. Uh, 26 cards in the set. You can get this little booster pack as part of joining a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament and winning now. 13 commons, 10 super rares, 3 ultimate rares. It's available now. All right, let's move on to our RPG bookshelf with an RPG-related product uh, with uh, Icons of the Realm classic creatures box set of miniatures now this is done by whiz kids technically but it's nine creatures reimagined from the original uh dnd monster manual they're approximately four inches tall um the classic demogorgon with two heads it's got Org ogre mad guy demogorgon troll or uh purple worm orc archer sanguine mystic albear and a sanguine sanguine um, so now you can get these out, this little set here of interesting little miniatures based upon the classic D&D &D creatures available. Uh, also an RPG bookshelf though, we do have a Shadowrun release, the Seattle Gambit. Um, so this is an adventure, a, a run that you can take out. Um, it's a sequel to a previous one that they had put out. Uh, a former Shadowrunner discovers the shadows have long tendrils, um, and with his new partner in crime, he's still getting kind of pursued by problems. Is this actually... Oh, it's a fiction. Look at me. It's a novel. It's an RPG novel. I'm talking it's an adventure. Uh, but it does... Uh, is the new Shadowrun fiction that also... Oh, wow. Interesting. Uh, so it's a Shadowrun fiction, but it includes new gear, NPCs, and rules in the story to help you even perhaps adapt it to your 5th edition games or use some of the basic concepts. 
So that's why it's an interesting one to talk about because it's actually more interesting than I thought it was. It's both a short story slash novel and a resource book for you to possibly run a Shadowrun game. Now finally out is a, a third party Pathfinder supplement, uh, Cold Blooded, a, a player's guide to lizard folk. It's simple as that. It's all about lizard folk, playing as lizard folk, uh, specialized things with lizard folk. So if you're if you like lizard folk a lot, this mini source book with use for Pathfinder is out now for you to check out. That you can uh, look into it and see if it's something you'd be interested. It's up on the Drive Through RPG for ninety nine cents. Let's move on to our card game desk, of course, with some Super Kitty Bug Slap. So this is a small card game by Steve Jackson Games. Uh, you grab the coolest cats, so you find some bug slapping action, a speedy card game for three to five players. We're slapping the right cards, uh, we'll put them in the lead, slapping the wrong cards will send you home with your tail between your legs. It's a simplistic game of speed reflexes with little kind of kitty pictures all about slapping some bugs. Also out though is Munchkin, oh god. Uh, Valentine's Day, the Monster Box. A, it is a storage box designed to hold 2,000 Munchkin cards plus two foam blocks, a tray, and 12 specialized Munchkin cards of its own. And it's all Valentine's related. So it's another box thing that they have these boxes for holding ma uh, uh, Munchkin cards because they've released so many. <coughs> so it's another kind of specialized swag that you can check out now. We also have out uh, Majesty, um, for the realms. So this is available now. Uh, it is for two to four players, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, it's you're entering the middle ages you're recruiting loyal subjects and whoever's the most gold wears the crown of course it's a simple sort of card game with a number of characters uh different things the crown is basically up for grab and the richest domain will be seizing the power of everything it's a bit of strategy set in a middle age kind of setting where you're taking command of your own noble and trying to get command of a whole bunch of different loyal subjects to build up your realm um it's got a number of point cards Judging from one point cards to up to 100 point, uh, or one point, uh, one point chips to up to 100 point chips, 32 location cards, 60 character cards, four worker cards, 30 little wooden meeples, a summary rule sheet, and a rules book, all available now. And you could download the rules for free if you want to check out what they are. Uh, moving on, we have Tokyo Ghoul, the card game. So it's, um, if you ever kind of wanted to run around, eat people, this is a little way of doing it. It's a, uh, it's brought to you by Shinobi Seven. Uh, it's a based upon the popular horror anime and slash manga series Tokyo Ghoul. Of course, it's for two to four players. Um, it's it's focusing, you know, the the first human ghoul hybrid walked the streets, had a lot of problems. Uh, it's a turf war. You're capturing a combination of deck building and direct combat in here with the card game where uh, you have to make decisions and carefully planned strategies and it's got a lot of the fan fan information things that fans will notice when it comes to the anime or the hit manga series that you'll be able to recognize a lot of stuff about this game uh so yeah two to four players a bit of strategy you can check it out now moving on though we have legend of the five rings fate has no secrets another dynasty pack has been released so, um, we've been talking about, you know, in the, the Dynasty Packs going to the Forbidden City, everything has a price, even that stuff in the Forbidden City, and now you're diving sort of into uh, things with that, with this Dynasty Pack. Um, you, you know, a family came to the Forbidden City for assistance, there's a traitor there, you're going to have to deal with them, deal with Imperial Duty. Things like that that are uh, themes within the Legend of the Five Rings card game that now you can dive into deeper with this pack. Also out is Lord of the Rings card game is the Dungeons of Circuit Grath. Uh, as journeying across the land from the Port of Umber to the wastes of Near Hared to the deepest jungles of the Far Hared uh, and some of the other Middle Earth's greatest heroes uh, now within the Hared Haramid cycle, they've put to themselves the Citadel of Sir Kareth. And of course, it's Dungeon. 
Uh, you have to rescue captives from there is the basic storyline of the cards, and then escape. So if you're interested in that, if you're a big fan of the Lord of the Rings card game, you can check it out now. Kingsburg has a revised edition out now. So, of course, you know, sometimes a game needs a little bit of updates. Mechanics smoothed out, uh, updated art, uh, various components changed to decrease quality of it. You know, the difference between the old game and the new game can be quite distinct. They're usually pretty much the same game, but little things, changes can do this. So, Kingsburg has basically come back. The realm of Kingsburg is under attack. Armies of orcs, barbarians, zombies, and other things are on the border waiting to threat. And uh, you've been appointed governor to help the peace under King Tritus himself and manage the and defend the provinces from enemy attacks. It's on to you. Will you be a member of the royal court eventually? Will you shield the realm? Or will the invading hordes crush you? And that's Kingsburg basically in a nutshell. The revised edition is available now if you want to check it out and see if you are interested in it in the updates they've had. Um, moving on though in our uh, board game pile of course we have dragon pets uh, who would want who wouldn't want a dragon for a pet you know and uh, now you're competing in the 1783rd dragon beating competition and uh, you have to catch the most wild dragons uh, and get them together you know uh, and show you that you're the best dragon breeder around it's for two to four players uh, use dice pools that you must share with other breeders. Send them um, dragon seekers to the forest to catch rare wondrous dragons. Find the most suitable mates. Time can run out quickly. Unpaired dragons will inflict a steep penalty. Gather most valuable breeding pairs. Claim the right of supreme dragon beater, breeder in this game. Uh, who brought us a lot of... Uh, for the company that brought us a lot of similar type games. Also about is Battle for Rokugan. A new board game that just has released. Uh, on sale at local retailers. For two to five players, uh, playing a time is about an hour. In the early days of the Emerald Empire, several honorable clans battled for dominance over a rich land of Rokugan. Uh, only one can rise above its rivals and become the great leader of it. And that's the basic kind of things. Uh, where uh, you are a game of conquest, mayhem in the mighty daimyo that must use your strength and cunning and strategy, gain control of the region, bring honor to your clan, lead your people to glory, and make the land yours for the taking. So that's the basics of it. You're in a land that's divided. Plan your out your attacks. Call for your banners. Engage your enemies and claim victory in the battle for Rokugan, which is out now. <coughs> All right. Also out are two specialized small world expansions, uh, Power Pack One and Power Pack Two. These expansions are actually uh, sets of smaller expansions that are being put together in, in one place in order to sort of streamline it. Okay, uh, they're basically replacing older expansions that once exist. These are the latest things. Uh, so, for example, uh, Power Pack 1 had the Be, Be Not Afraid and Spider's Web expansions that is combining the two of them together. It combines all the races and special powers of those two along with a special tray to store the tokens. Uh, power pack 2 uh, combines all the races and powers of the cursed uh, grand dames uh, and royal bonus of the small world so those three sets come com put together each of them again once having storage trays and stuff for these things put together uh, so if the power pack 1 would have 8 race banners uh, 8 special power banners power pack 2 also has 8 race but 10 special power banners uh so yeah for you can get 42 various tokens 80 98 various race tokens that are put together between these two packs for expanding on your small world pack so if you've never had any small world expansions this might be a place to come and look in and get some small world expansions all right because we are actual pretty quick one today and there isn't any major there isn't nearly as much news as there was last week we're already uh, throwing ourselves into our Kickstart display. We only have two Kickstarters this week. Let's talk about the first one. Sigma, the signal which kills the signal kills fascists. This is a tabletop rolling playing game about eth ethical eth ethical insurgency against a fascist regime set in a dystopian version of the 1980s. It has been funded 16 days to go. It is well within their stretch goals. As I said, it's a basically cyberpunk tabletop role playing game 
in a dystopian 1980s where you're dealing with fascists, you take the role of receivers, a superheroic vanguard of resistance, who possess incredible powers in the, ra uh, in the range of FM radio towers emitted to a mysterious thing called the signal. Basically, in this radio towers, it gives you superpowers. And you function as infantry and armor, the people's shield, protect against mass demonstrations, uh... Protecting mass demonstrations from the brutality of the militarized Paris and neo-Nazi hooligans. And the signal is down your mere morals, and you have to kind of deal with that fact. So it's dealing with when the signal is on, when the signal is off, and the fascists that are under control of the world as it is now in this dystopian alternate reality 1986. Whew. Yep. Now, they are funded. They've hit a bunch of their stretch goals. Uh... They're 12, 15, 18,000, 21,000, 24,000 is what they're working for. All of them are additional modules and information for adding to the game, which is available once they finally get it finished. And it is set. It's a funded Kickstarter, so you can definitely check it out and see if you'd be interested in it now. The other one is Nemo's War, Nautilus Upgrades, Expansions, and Reprint. So this is upgrades, expansions, and reprint. It is funded. It won for thirty thousand. It's at a hundred and three thousand. Nine days to go. So this is including a for the Nemo's War expansion pack, Nautilus upgrades, uh, which is a bunch of cards. Um, this is of course. Give me a drink here for a second. Um, and this is one that could be played as a solo game where you take the role of Captain Nemo aboard the Nautilus. There's a reprint and expansion. Uh, it's basically going around the 19, 1870s of uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. You're in your amazing electric power submarine, the Nautilus, as Captain Nemo. It's a single player board game of underwater exploration and combat where you search the oceans, combat vessels of all nations, braze hazards of the sea, find mysterious treasures, behold amazing wonders, and a quest for knowledge and vengeance. Uh, the secondary, the second edition of this is part of the entire release here. It's more than it's funded with a lot of days to go. Um, so it, 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 the components normally would be the expansion and the base game that you can get together. So it's a new expansion as part of it. Uh, you can just get the expansion for $5 or you can go for 59, the expansion and a copy of the game. Um, so, um, they, have they actually said anything about stretch goals? I don't see anything about stretch goals right now. Uh, um, let me just try to read up here a little bit. Um, they have, they are doing some certain things for it, but they haven't had any, um, exact information about kind of long-term stretch goals in it and it was funded in less than four hours so it's uh available to join it now uh just two ones that have been funded this week and unfortunately that's all the news i was able to throw together for this week so it's a very short one only about 20 minutes of uh show time here today uh i hope you enjoyed the show you know we're gonna be ending up for today next week i'll be back for more tabletop news We'll be discussing a lot of these things, of course, on Discussing Tabletop this Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where me, Diamond Worm, and Joe will be back again. Uh, you know, maybe we'll end up lucky get a guest, but at least three of us will be discussing these various topics, various things that have been released, and letting you know about them, what's going on in the future. If you want to ask any, any questions about it, you can, of course, leave it here in the chat. You could throw it to me in YouTube when it put when this goes up as VOD on the YouTube side, or you could email us at DiscussingTabletop at Yahoo.com. If it's something that we want you want us to bring up and talk about on Discussing Tabletop, we will take questions on this, or even general role-playing game questions. You can also send questions to joe or worms twitters great ways of reaching us plenty of ways to ask questions about tabletop games these and more so i'll be back next week uh for more gathering roll